you see is this car, and that's what drew us here today. Clearly, there was some sort of major explosion here. That fire burned so hot that everything combusted. So this car, we don't think it was a gas tank explosion. Uh, we believe it was something else. It just flipped it right on top of its hood. Um, I, I don't even know what this thing is, but it's all over the place. And if you look down on the ground, uh, we've seen them. You can see shell casings. Uh, people have had ammo and weapons in their house, and everything here exploded. Now, I want you to take a little bit of a look with me into this neighborhood. We're going to go over this driveway. Um, this was a very nice neighborhood. Green lawns, some two-story homes, and everywhere you look, it is utter devastation. The scene here is apocalyptic. Now, this goes on for block after block after block. Things are still smoldering here in some very disconcerting news from law enforcement. They say that there are over 150 people still missing right now. They expect the death toll to rise. And when you look around, it is easy to understand why. Now, one of the things that really distinguishes this fire is, well, there are two things, really. But the first is that it went through the heart of major communities. Santa Rosa and everything you see around me, this is a community of 175,000 people. It is a small city. And for all intents and purposes, and that fire raged through not only the hills coming down in here, but right around the city's hospital. It engulfed a major hotel, a Hilton Hotel. It took down a Kmart, strip malls, restaurants, uh, left nothing in its wake. And when you look at the cars here, you understand that people did not have time to get out. Um, many people left their cars here thinking that they probably would be back home. Obviously, that was not the case. And in so many cases, from the eyewitnesses and survivors that we spoke to, they left literally with the clothes on their back, some of them managing to take out um, essential documents, maybe jewelry. But one of the most heart-wrenching moments that we experienced yesterday was um, about two or three houses down, and a woman named Chris Pond. Now, I heard her before I saw her. We were actually just driving around doing a time-lapse video of everything, and she was digging in the rubble with her hands. She's wearing latex gloves, and, and the, the, the latex had already burnt right through her fingers. Her shoes had melted off because she was looking for her family heirlooms. Um, she was crying hysterically there in the rubble, unable to find what she was looking for because everything was so incredibly charred. Now, what also distinguishes this fire and what made it so ferocious is those wind speeds. We're talking about 50 miles an hour, and that's why it swept through here with such incredible speed and why so many people didn't have time to get out. Uh, and in some of these videos, you see people driving through what looked like tunnels of fire, they, the embers like a blizzard in front of their cars. Um, really frightening stuff. And law enforcement officials tell us that they tried to get people out as quickly as possible, but in some cases, there simply wasn't time. They went knocking on doors. They use sirens. They use the, the PA system on those cruisers to get people out of their homes. But with those wind speeds at 50 miles an hour, there was not much they can do. And that is why they expect the death toll to rise. Now, I just want to give you a sense of how we do what we do. Um, this morning for Good Morning America, we had uh, a number of crews. We had one on the car shooting a wide shot. We had lights everywhere. But there are no facilities here. There's, there's no electricity. There's nothing. So. Everything that you want to shoot, you have to shoot yourself. And you just continue to look in this direction and you see the devastation. And that's what is so surprising. You know, sometimes there are fires, there are forest fires, and we show a burnt out campground or obviously a forest that's still burning. And that is a loss. But when you see the extent of this, and maybe Ken can come a couple of feet farther, I mean, it's just endless. I mean, that's another street and another one beyond it. And literally in every direction that we will take you, you will see block after block of completely destroyed homes. Nothing, nothing in this area survived. And you can see some of the debris still smoldering there. Now, I talked about the ferocity of the explosion, the heat that it caused. And uh, that firestorm blew debris right up into the trees. I don't know if our cameraman Ken can see that, but that appears to be siding from somebody's house. Now. How it got up there is as much of a mystery as how that car flipped over on its top. But obviously, the force of the wind or whatever explosion detonated uh, some of the debris in houses and cars here uh, was forceful enough to simply shred homes and toss pieces well into 
the trees up there, that's got to be at least 40 feet, 50 feet up in the air. Now, it is going to take a long time for this place to recover. Um, law enforcement officials tell us it'll be years before this place comes back to normal. And this is a middle class community. The mayor lives somewhere in this charred mess that you see here. So really it hit the, the heart, the guts of this community. Now, one of the problems for law enforcement right now is that a lot of these roads are in really bad shape. Uh, they're nails, they're pieces of metal from the explosions everywhere, they're bullets on the ground. Um, transformers have blown, they're sort of dangling out in the air, they're very concerned about that. Power lines are down, so just getting around these neighborhoods to making sure that there aren't people still trapped or to recover the bodies is going to be difficult. That as this fire continues to burn, um, about 75,000 acres have burned so far. That is about twice the size of Washington, D.C., and some of the flames reach 10 stories high. Um, so that is what firefighters had to contend with. And, you know, we were driving around here last night, and it was shocking how few firefighters we saw. We saw this, that Hilton Hotel I mentioned, completely ablaze. And normally you would see firefighters trying to put it out because their concern is the embers. They go up to the trees, the trees catch fire, they catch on a roof or shingles, and that starts other fires. But they were so strapped that they were just trying to protect the buildings that they could to save the essential buildings of this community, like the hospital. Uh, basically, everything around the major hospital here in Santa Rosa, Casa Permanente, was burned. The hospital was evacuated, 130 people taken out, and there were some stunning images of patients being wheeled out on gurneys, staff members surrounding those gurneys as they're being wheeled out, holding IVs just to make sure that the patients remain stable. They are evacuated to hospitals. We don't know of any major injuries of any of the people um, who were evacuated, and truly a heroic effort on the part of firefighters and police to get people out uh, as quickly as they did. Again, the issue with this fire has been the speed with which it moved, giving people so little opportunity to get out of these communities. And, uh, you know, again, when you talk to them, it's just, it's heartbreaking to hear the stories. Um, I'll give you one more before we sign off. Um, there's a single mother, a nurse, a block over there, and um, she'd worked all her life to buy a house. She bought it in 2009. She's got one son, and the only thing that they managed to salvage were these two concrete tablets, uh, blocks that they had planted in the backyard with the handprints of her son nine years ago and hers. And then the other block, it said, I love Ben and Ben loves mom. Um, and that was uplifting to them that they could at least find that. But everything else was gone. And people are very, very concerned for their livelihoods here. Again, this is Matt Gutman. I'm in Santa Rosa, California, the site of probably the worst fire, uh, at least in this area. It is being considered one of the worst fires in California history. We know of at least 11 deaths in Northern California. Uh, many, many thousands of acres burned, 150 people missing, and many more people uh, expected to have fallen to this fire and to be trapped somewhere in this rubble. Again, Matt Gutman, ABC News. Thanks for watching.